Okay, we're going to get started here. Welcome to week four, live, le live lecture one. Uh, we are meeting tonight. Um, you have one more lecture after this. We'll be meeting on Friday. I apologize for the late meetup, but um, I had to shift some things around in order to work my schedule. And um, so I know I'm ta just talking to Melissa because you're the only one in this class. So hopefully <clears throat> you are reading your feedback from last week. I did give you some comments that you need to look over and revise to resubmit, so make sure you're doing that. Let me know if you have any other questions. You are receiving the feedback that I'm giving you and resubmitting your past work um, uh, success, successfully, so hopefully this won't be an issue for you. Um, also, you know, don't feel afraid to reach out to me if you have any questions. Listening to the live lectures will definitely clarify a lot of things, hopefully, for you. Um, and uh, today, I hopefully won't be coughing as much as last week, <laughs> kind of getting over the <clears throat> sickness that I had. So um, just a little rough the past week. <laughs> but uh, we're in the last week of this class, and uh, we're going to be hopefully ending strong here, um, going into uh, a new project. So let's go over what were our learning objectives for this week. And we will be going over your assignment four and just talking about app production, and I will help you get started with how to approach the final project. The learning objectives for week four for this class is identify how pop art color theory brings impact to photographic media and apply its method. Discuss how historic pop art color theory relates to contemporary graphic design color considerations. Define hues, tints, tones, and shades of color. Describe cool and warm colors and color schemes. Discuss the role color plays in the five design elements, line, shape, color, value, and texture. Define the importance of accessibility and color contrast choices in screen-based design. And describe how visual tension and visual harmony is created using it and seven color contrasts. Oops. Those are kind of what we will be, uh, what we will, you should be walking away from this week in the final class. Now, if you go to week four, again, you'll see these same learning objectives as far as, and also um, a video which corresponds with what we're going to be doing. So it says, congratulations, we have made it to week four. Have you ever picked up a package at the store because you've taken, you are taken with the color? How about admire the brilliant oranges and pinks in a sunset? This week we will be wrapping up our learning on color by looking at how color can be used for visual impact and power. Get us thinking about how color can be used to make you look. Please watch the video, A Guide to Pop Art. And this kind of goes along with your final project, so I'm gonna go ahead and play this, just a short two minute video here. It was a time of optimism and post-war economic boom for many. Supermarket aisles were filled with consumer products. Advertising and glossy magazines told people what to buy and made them want to buy it. Movie stars filled the silver screen, giving rise to celebrity culture. And the youth fought for freedom. Out of this new popular culture, pop art was born. Its subjects were celebrities, comics, cans, condiments, and cuisine. Its style was flat, colorful, graphic, and commercial-like. Pop art was... Critics were skeptical. How could soup be art? But pop artists were referencing the world in which people actually lived. And as Andy Warhol put it, everything is art. In the UK, Richard Hamilton was amongst the first to reference pop culture using cutouts from American magazines. He was followed by Peter Blake and Edward Hopkins together, and so David and Milton <laughs> Over in the land of the three, however, pop art was really actually converted to the actualism. I feel like Nick Hamilton was flagged by the design of the client, Robert Rauschenberg and Jasper Dolan led the way. And and he walk all the birds onto the scene with his school friends. He can rain at the clear of the park. When he puts time to a comic book with high art, 
He finds all the rhymes and words. Now and under, pop art started as a reaction to the conservative state in Australian art. A group called the Annandale Imitation Realists added odds and ends to their canvases in defiance. Later, the American and British pop culture explosion was embraced by Aussie artists like Martin Sharp and Brett Whiteley. By the end of the 60s, pop art's heyday was over, but its legacy had only just begun. A post-pop art emerged. In Australia, it was called popism. This new generation mined past and present pop culture and even borrowed, or appropriated, work from the past. Pop art is one of the defining and most recognizable movements of the 20th century. Today, it's more than a reflection of popular culture, it's part of it. Okay, very interesting. So that's kind of what we're going to be um, diving into a little bit with the pop art movement for this week um, for your final project. All righty. Um, don't forget to go into your course media for week four as well. This will help you um, kind of understand a little bit more of the techniques that we're going to be doing this week as far as also the uh, review for your quiz. You will have a quiz for your assessment four. Um, but uh, for instance, it goes into lynda.com videos, um, this particular chapter here, uh, the Andy Warhol look um, would be definitely worth checking out because that's kind of what we're going to be doing for this week. All right, so let's go right into your discussion here. Read over this. <coughs> All right, um, so it says in the 1950s, the pop art movement began in both Britain and United States. Championed by artists such as Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein, pop art celebrated the everyday. Artwork often depicted everyday objects in a bold and graphic manner using bright, flat colors. Popular things from everyday culture were used as an inspiration and subject matter. Unlike the previous color theories of Newton, where color was a scientific construct created by light rays, both where color was, both where color was created by mental associations or interpretation, or Kandinsky, where color was simultaneously a physical and spiritual element, color in the pop art era, color was used purely for impact, almost like a shout or call out for attention. Flat primary colors were layered together and often combined in unexpected or even, e even purposely clashing ways to draw attention. Red, yellow, and blue were the main colors used in compositions. These colors were not meant to reflect an artist's inner world, rather they were meant to reflect popular culture and the world around the artist and all its dynamic flow and energy. Pop art color theory was about using color to draw attention to the objects and world in which we live. For example, Warhol's iconic Campbell's Soup series, and you can click on that and check, take a look at that. There's a series here. He used bright red and gold to turn a common household product into art. Pop art was decidedly out, outward focused with color celebrating and highlighting objects in ideas rather than highlighting the artist's own ideas. In this way, pop art color theory is very relevant to graphic designers working today because designers today must also use color in ways that reflect and celebrate the messages of their clients rather than their own preferences or desires. So for this discussion, we will return once more to the museum exhibit we have been discussing over the course of the class. The production team has also hired you to design a smartphone app that allows users to transform photos they've taken to pop art pieces in the style of Warhol, only with a 21st century twist. These photos will be projected within the exhibit and allow attendees to become part of the exhibit itself. As part of the app design process, you need to choose which colors will be used as the filtering elements for the images. The original pop art movement was all about using primary colors to reflect the popular culture of the day. What sort of colors might you choose for the app so that they would reflect the popular culture of today? Would you stick with the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue, or do you feel that different colors better represent culture today? 
Conversely, do you think that a photo sharing app would be a positive addition to the exhibit? Or do you think there's a more appropriate way for exhibit attendees to contribute to the exhibit? For your citation, you might use articles that show examples of color trends and color forecasting. You can also find articles from experts that suggest how museums and other institutions are using their user content and participatory design to build interactivity. All right. Um, and then obviously, since you know, you won't be responding to do two separate peer posts, just make sure your post has the reply, um, I'm sorry, the post requirements with the two APA citations, um, 200 plus words. All right. If you're confused about the APA, there's a little example here you can take a look at. <clears throat> so basically, you're going to be answering these questions specifically with added supportive uh, citations. In your own words, after you cite your um, citation, you know, kind of sum it up in your own words. Okay. Um, you know, look up trends, color trends. Um, that's something simple that you can do just online. Do color, 2018 color trends. <coughs> right here. It's um, kind of giving you some swatches to, to pull. I and mean, I can definitely pull those off for what we're kind of working on. So it says here, pretty, pretty practical in pink. Metallics is neutrals, bright, bright and bold. The color of the year for Pantone is ultraviolet. Modern gradients, pastels, the new minimalistic uh, palette. Brutalism, the good, bad, and of course the ugly. Black is the new black. It's just... Uh, all kinds of links that you can definitely check out. Here's another, another website here, Pretty Practical in Pink. Metallics is Neutrals. Bright and Bold. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, just the thing that I brought up here, swatches. Here's the ultraviolet color of the year. Modern gradients. Pastels. Brutalism, brutalism, good, bad, and ugly. Black is the new black. So, you know, there's all kinds of different um, resources that you can tap into for this. So definitely uh, check that out. And just kind of answer the questions in, in your own words with your supportive material. Let me know if you have any questions. This kind of, this definitely ties into your project here going forward. <clears throat> so with that being said, I'm actually going to go into your assignment four and read over what's, what you are to be expected for this. So it's called Elevating the Everyday. So in the pop art era, color was used as an impactful statement meant to draw attention through its flat application and bold usage. Rather than mimic reality, pop artists use color to distort, distill, and flatten reality into an almost machine-made aesthetic. In addition, in the pop art era, greater emphasis was placed on creating art in more mechanical ways, such as through photography and, and photographic manipulations. Often, pop artists would purposely skew colors in photos, paint over or obscure parts of photos, or combine screen printing and photography together to produce gridded images. Photos from the era are usually captivating because they show the everyday world through a bright, bold, new lens. Because the flat, bold colors of pop art are <clears throat> natural ways to display brand colors clearly and directly, the pop art style has become increasingly popular in advertising to design today for its simplicity, impact, and relative ease of production. So, 
for this assignment, we will return once more to the museum exhibit about the history of color as we design and mock up a pop art photo filtering app meant to accompany the exhibit. So you're gonna download the exhibit logo and type elements here to so go ahead and do that. Your app will need to have four screens total with the following elements. The loading screen with the provided exhibit logo. Photo taking screen with the branded frame. <coughs> Example photo in screen with filter options. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then photo example, photo, photo example, photo art filter and share options. So it's basically, think about it when you're on your iPhone or your smartphone and you download the app and you can see the little favicon on there. We'll show you examples here. And then once you get into the actual app, um, you wanna see kind of the photo taking, taking screen with the branded frame. So that means it'll show you what's in the frame that you're going to take a photo of first and then um, with a little logo at the very bottom. And then number three, example photo in screen with filter options. So you'll see the examples of what that filter is doing with options. And then photo example, pop art filter and share options. So you'll see kind of the pop art filter uh, in, in that next screen with share options. <clears throat> okay. You will need to create, create all navigation elements and also consider the user flow through the app itself. So just kind of think about where that person will tap to get to the next screen, you know, the actual um, signifiers that will tell the person, you know, this is what you do next. Look at popular photo sharing apps for inspiration and consider which color combinations for each filter would most represent contemporary culture today. Design your app in Photoshop with each screen on its own artboard. After you have designed your flat files, mock them up into one of the app screen of mockups available in your Adobe CC Marketplace. I actually have um, the template for you for the one that I'm doing in the demo that I can provide in, in announcements. So just make sure that if you're following along with the lectures and you wanna do the one that I'm doing, I will give it to you guys, or give it to you for, uh, for this, if you wanna use that. When you're done, you're gonna save your document as a PDF, the following name. Choose the strongest pieces from this course and add them to your Behance portfolio site. A minimum of one piece is required for your portfolio submission instructions. And then when you're going to, well, after you do that, email the links to your FPA and you can CC me. Okay, let me know if you have any questions. Um, I'll kind of get started here in uh, how, you, how you could get this going. Before we even do anything with this project, I do want to show you uh, a video because we're going to be obviously creating pop art for one of the images that you're going to show in your app. In announcements, I posted this yesterday, or on the 11th, yeah, yesterday. Excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze here. Oh, okay, that came up quick. Um, and I want to show this because this is really a nice video, it's not real long, um, that explains how to create, how to make a pop art portrait from a photo. And so I'm gonna kind of go through these same steps too. So I want you to watch this video and then I'm gonna do the demo, kind of showing you how I would approach the project using the same technique for the photo that, that I'm going to be using. And then I'll kind of show you how to create your four screens with navigation. Um, I might break this up into two sessions because um, I, the next session that we're gonna be meeting on Friday um, you have just for your assessment, which I usually break up the assignment, the assessment every week, you just have a quiz coming up. So I really don't have the material to go over for that other than saying review kind of what we course materials that you've gone through in the class. So what I might do is just kind of break this um, demo up uh, for you. Continue what we don't go over on Friday and then 
um, you know, go from there. All right, with that being said, I'm gonna play this, this demo here, and this kind of gives you a good idea of how to create pop art from a photo. And it's created a website for my business. Let me show you how I did it. Let's go to Wix.com. I can do anything I want and change things as I go. Our business idea is big. It's a hotel in the space. Now, I'm going to have a beautiful gallery. Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Over a year ago, I did a tutorial showing how to make this pop art portrait of Lady Gaga based on the iconic silk screens of celebrities and other famous people by Andy Warhol. Due to its popularity, I'll show you how to make another one using techniques that are quicker and simpler. Choose a photo of someone you'd like to make into a portrait. If it's in color, you saturate it. Pressing Control Shift U on a PC or Command Shift U on a Mac. Make sure it's cropped so it just shows the subject's head and the top of the shoulders. We need to make sure that its size and resolution will be most effective for the filters we'll be using. So go to Image and Image Size. Click on the chain link to lock its aspect ratio. This will keep its proportions intact. Type in 500 pixels for the width and 72 pixels per inch, and click OK. To fit it back onto your screen, press Control or Command-0. To make its darkest areas black and the lightest areas white, invoke Auto-Tone by pressing Control or Command-Shift-L. We need to make a selection around the subject to separate it from its background. There are many ways to do this, and I covered them in many of my tutorials. For this example, I'll use the pencil tool. Make the size 10 pixels and the hardness 100%. If your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Click the Quick Mask button so we can draw a quick mask. Draw loosely around the head and shoulders and make sure there are no openings in your quick mask. Open your paint bucket. Click the quick mask button so we can draw a quick mask. Draw loosely around the head and shoulders and make sure there are no openings in your quick mask. Open your paint bucket tool and click down anywhere inside the quick mask. Press Q to change the quick mask into a selection, and press Control or Command plus Delete to fill it with white, which is your background color. Press Q to change the quick mask into a selection, and press Control or Command plus Delete to fill it with white, which is your background color. To delete the selection, press Control or Command D. Make a copy of your image to a selection and press Control or Command plus Delete to fill it with white, which is your background color. To delete the selection, press Control or Command D. Make a copy of your image by pressing Control or Command plus J. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the sketch folder and click Halftone Pattern. Make the size 1, the contrast 40, and the pattern type dot. Depending on the characteristics of your photo, you may want to adjust the contrast amount. There should be a good balance of shadow and highlight with just enough midtones as halftone dots. Click OK to accept it. Go to Filter, Sharpen, and Smart Sharpen. Make the amount 500% the radius 1 pixel, keep the reduced noise to 0%, and remove Gaussian Blur. Then click OK. We now 
Make the amount 500%, the radius one pixel, keep the reduced noise to 0%, and remove Gaussian blur. Then click OK. We now have a crisp black and white halftone dot portrait. Change the blend mode to multiply. Go to the new layer icon and control click it on a PC or command click it on a Mac to make a new layer below the active layer. We'll fill the empty layer with a color by clicking on your Change the blend mode to multiply. Go to the new layer icon and control click it on a PC or command click it on a Mac to make a new layer below the active layer. We'll fill the empty layer with a color by clicking on your foreground color to open the color picker. Pick a color you like for your background. I'll pick a dark turquoise. Then press enter or return. Press alt or option plus delete to fill it with the color. We'll do the skin next. Click on the foreground color box. For this example, I'll type in F7CEB7. Open your pencil tool by pressing B on your keyboard. To increase its size, press the right bracket key. Now, paint in areas of the skin on your subject. Don't be concerned right now with the colors of other areas of the face and neck, like the eyes, lips, clothing, or jewelry. We'll paint them in over the skin. If you want to paint back in a color, press I on your keyboard to open the eyedropper tool. Click on the color, press B again to open your pencil tool, and paint over those areas. To paint in white for the eyes and jewelry, I'll invert the foreground and background colors by pressing X on my keyboard. Now I have white as my foreground color. To decrease the size of your pencil, press the left bracket key. I'll paint over the eyes, earrings, and necklace, and then pick different colors for the lips and eyeshadow. Have fun transforming photos of someone you know into pop art portraits. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching. Okay, so basically what we're going to do, we're going to use that same technique for your project because we have to show uh, a part of that process of your filtering options. Let me go back to the instructions here. When we're creating your screens, we have to show a photo example pop art filter and share options. So you're going to want to show the example of if that app were to be selected, that's what it will look like. Okay. Now it's up to you what object that you want to use. You can do an object like a cup, for example, here. Um, you know, obviously you want the background to be simple. So, we're, you know, we have to take care of that. Or you could do a portrait. I'm going to show you kind of how to do a portrait. All right. So I'm going to open up Photoshop here. And I'm going to do File, New. And I'm just going to do, actually, I'm going to go File, Open. I downloaded a free high-res image of a woman, portrait of a woman on pixabay.com. Um, so like I said, you could do a portrait of somebody. Just make sure the size is you know, going to work. For this one, I believe the instructions were, um, I think it was, let's see here, pixels. It was a square, we're just going to keep it as is. All right, we'll just keep it right now as is. Now I'm just going to go through the steps that this um, that video kind of went through. Now I'm going to name this "Woman Pop Art," so we can we want the original to be saved as well because we're going to show that as the before the app is uh, applied. 
Okay, Command Shift U is a deselect, I'm sorry, desaturate on a Mac. So Command Shift U, just like in the video. If you need to do any cropping now, you can choose the crop mark and just get anything that, you know, might not be needed in here, just kind of cropping out some of the details, just really honing in on her face. Um, get rid of her thumb there. This looks good. Select crop. Okay. Command Shift L kind of brightens up your your piece so that you know you have a brighter selection there, and that's on a Mac. Now what I'm going to do is take the pencil tool. Where is that pencil tool? Pencil tool. If you go to, let's see. Under your paintbrush tool, I think it's B on your, yeah, your um, shortcut key. Okay, with the pencil tool selected, I'm going to make sure that I have uh, my size needs to be 10 pixels. It's like close enough. Hardness at 100%, we're good to go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go around her head here with the hair there we go make sure this is all closed up Then I'm going to take the paint bucket tool, which is, I forget where this is too. Excuse me here. Paint bucket tool. I may not have it up here. Hold on a second. Maybe under this one. There we go. Paint bucket tool. That is shortcut key G on your keyboard. And then we're just going to click inside. You're just kind of clicking inside this area here. Have to fill in here. Zoom in here so we get all these little pieces. Press Q to change the selection, control, command, and delete. Oh. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do a step here. Let me go back. Before I do the paint bucket. 
I'm not gonna be able to go back. Okay, let me try this again, guys, sorry. Let's start over here. I forgot to do the quick mask, that was my bad. Okay, let's try this again. All right, good thing we saved the original here. All right, so we're gonna crop her first. Okay, we're going to desaturate this, the so command shift Q. Control zero. All right, uh, command shift L. I think it makes it a little bit brighter there. Then we'll take the pencil tool. Set the settings up here. Press D, make sure your black is in the foreground, and then we're just gonna do like a painted around her. And I'm just gonna do around her hair. Actually, no, I'm gonna do around her body because I think that's what he did too. Okay. This is the, the step that I, I missed. So we're gonna do a quick mask first. Oops, you know what? I did that wrong too. I'm sorry, geez. Before I do the pencil, do a quick mask. So a quick mask and then pencil. We'll get it right, right? <laughs> We'll get it right. Let's make sure it ends. There we go. Looks good. Paint bucket and click inside. So we're gonna take the paint bucket, click inside. See that works a little bit better there. Let's go down here. Any other spots you think need clicked? Good to go. Okay, press Q to change it to a selection. Control Command Delete to fill with white. We're just command delete, sorry. Command D. Okay, we're gonna click off of this. Command D. Control NJ. Command D. Control. All right, then we're going to go up to the filter, filter gallery. And we're going to go under uh, sketch half tone pattern. We're gonna make sure this is one for the size and 40 for the dot. I don't know if that's a contrast, there we go. And you can kind of play around with this if it looks better, like lower than 40 is kind of what the tutorial said, make sure it's a dot. Um, also, We want picture. click OK. Now we want to go up to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. Zoom out here. We want to make sure this is 500% one pixel radius and zero noise. And then take, remove Gaussian blur. All right, now,
we want to go up to the blend mode and choose multiply. Multiply. And then we want to do a command click to make a new layer. We should have a double layer of this. Let's see. Let's do duplicate layer. There we go. Multiply. This one can be normal. So you should have one on the top, one on the bottom here. Click on the foreground color for background. So we're going to kind of choose a foreground color. So let's do, I want to do that kind of that teal color. Option delete to fill. Then I'm going to choose another color. I'm going to double click in here. I'm going to choose maybe a pale pink because we're looking at some of those. Those trendier colors, I like that pale pink was kind of nice. Pencil tool and paint. So I just have to go back to my pencil tool. And I can enlarge this by doing the right bracket. And I can paint the skin tone areas. Go left uh, indent to make it smaller. So it's kind of like the skin tone areas. And if you make a mistake and you need to go back to, to fix this, so you got it in a, in a spot you didn't want to, like say for instance, like right over here, press the I on your keyboard, click on the color that you want it to be, and then B on your keyboard to go back to your eyedropper and just paint right over that area that kind of went over by accident. Same thing. I, if you want to go back to that pink color, B to your paintbrush and go over. I'm just doing her skin tone in this color. And then, then what I'm going to do is white for the eyes. I'm going to do X on my keyboard to get that X on the foreground. And then I'm just going to, oops, smaller here. Do her eyes in white. Um, anything else like the lips I could change? Say I want to do maybe a bright pink lip. Or a bright red. Let's do bright red. I'm going to that right the top. Same with eyeshadow. Like say if I wanted to do like a yellow eyeshadow, or yellow, that as well. Okay. So that's pretty much how you would be able, you know, how you would do this. Now I would save this as Pop Art PSD Desktop. That looks good. This layer would be, you know, maybe option one. So you could do, you know, a couple options for your filter options. So maybe, oops, sorry, let me delete this. Let me do a new layer. We can hide this one. And then pick a different background color. <clears throat> Option delete to fill. And then um, pencil tool and I'll just paint over like I did before, just with different colors. So 
my pencil tool where to go right here. Maybe this time I choose blue for the face. And body air type skin tone. There we go. It's getting there. Do X so the white. D on the keyboard will also do the white if that's not working for you, and then you can flip it around to do the eyes. Let's do like a purple for the lips. And then The bright pink for the eyeliner. So that would be another option. Let's do another one. One more. We get three at least. Option delete. Choose my color. This time it was a blue. I'll do maybe yellow for this one. I'm just choosing very bright colors for my example here. I think this would work really well with her portrait here. You definitely can tell it's an Andy Warhol look. You can do different shades based on like what you think the trends are kind of give a new modern twist to it. Ooh, it looks pretty good. And then wait on the eyes. So we have three options here. You could do more than three if you want to show more than three in your filter options. But you can see all three are done here. Okay. So that's how you would apply your pop art color to your image. Save it you know, all the layers in one file so that you can export it when you're ready. And then when we're ready to build your actual screens, we can add these squares, these different filter option colors in, in there. Because what we're gonna do, and let me show you here real quick. We are going to, and this is an example, not really with this project per se, but we're gonna show a screen with the favicon on it. So the favicon is like a little icon that you actually click on. So the screen, you're gonna develop a little favicon, and once you open it, this is the beginning screen that you're gonna see. And then what you're gonna show is the before image with the logo, and then the filter options. Now, obviously this is different because this is just, you know, a other sharing, photo sharing app. If you wanna look up examples of photo sharing apps, <coughs> um, I just did like a Google search here. 
excuse me. Um, Google here. I just looked up photo sharing apps. Um, so here's a website showing some of the top photo sharing apps. So Instagram's one of them. You know, obviously we all have know about Instagram. Hopefully, Flickr is another. Snapper, Retouch. So if you wanted to like check these out, what they look like. I'm not sure if you can look at it through here, but we'll click on this one for instance and see if there's any pictures there's none here what i would probably suggest if you have a smartphone go do like an app search and they should be able to show you some screens of examples of what the app looks like so like for instance let's say instagram photo app screen examples or something like that <clears throat> so Here we go, and I'm going to click on this so it's larger here. Just kind of notice how, you know, each photo app is designed. So you have your Instagram pictures and how they show in the gallery. So, you know, here's the filter part. So, you know, this is something you definitely want to check out and that we'll definitely be um, looking to create uh, in your screens here. Okay. Notice how they have the icons at the bottom. You might want to emulate that as well. And we'll talk about that in a second here. Um, you know, just kind of setting up your, your frame and it should be consistent. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead. I actually open up, let me open up, uh, I have a mock-up that I'm using. And I just wanna, oh, I got the measurements. Okay, hold on one second. So the measurements that I want you to use, if you're gonna use the mock-up that I'm doing, you're gonna use uh, for the four screens, the width will be 8.889 inches by 15.778 inches at 72 dots per inch RGB. So this is the, uh, let me see if I'm sharing the right screen here. This is the size here. So make sure if you're following along, the dimensions are 8.889 width by 15.778 inches high, 72 dots per inch. So this is the screen size. You're gonna do four layers, obviously. You don't have to do that now. You have four layers, uh, four screens, so you can definitely layer it in one area here. So I'm gonna put DES 380, I'm sorry, three, I'm teaching two classes, 314, uh, assignment four. Let's get this started here. So just think about first um, creating your initial screen. Um, don't worry about the favicon screen as of yet, the one that just shows all your apps on there. We'll get to that in a second. Like we'll get to that the next lecture. We'll, I'll show you kind of how to do that. But in your instructions, oops, I just opened up my contacts here. It talks about having the four screens, so loading screen with provided exhibit logo. That's what we're gonna focus on next, next uh, lecture. Photo taking screen with branded frame. So we can do that one because we have the original photo. So what we'll do is we're gonna create 
our frame here. So I would draw, you know, a bar up here and I would fill this with um, maybe like a darker gray. And I'm going to alt drag that down here. So I have two layers there. So these are like my top and bottom frames that um, I'm looking at here. All right, then I'm going to take my type tool and I'm just going to type original photo. And I'm going to bring this up and the center here. Now don't forget you have to have really good um, user sig uh, signifiers here. I'm going to put an X as far as like I'm going to change this to be a different typeface here. Uh, if you wanted to exit out, you have to kind of keep that in mind of, of how people go from one screen to the next. Be very clear and don't make it too confusing for people. So user experience is important. Now there's icons you can put in place here too. Yeah, let me actually show you, that might be better here. Hold on. Uh, leave that. There's symbols, open up my symbols. Oh, there's glyphs too. Let's take a look at those. Because we actually might have an X in here too. Not too much. Let's go to libraries. Libraries, here we go. This brings up your color library. I think what I'm thinking about is an illustrator and not so much here. Give me one second. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do is just do an X and let's just try to find, actually this one would probably work anyway. Um, and then, then do maybe a next so that people know that this is next. Make sure it's aligned. And I'm gonna change this to be maybe like a bright blue or let's do something a little different. Let's do yellow. Um, you might even wanna do like a little arrow, down arrow. You use the pen tool for that, for where it says original photo. So, you know, if you needed a click into different photos, you could definitely do that. Let me get my oh, where's the pen to add here? Must be hiding. Should be. Oh, here's the pen All right. Um, let me see them in here. So if that was a stroke, <laughs> you go to pass after you make that so we can make this an actual working path. Oops, I don't want that. We want to make this a color path. So <clears throat> like 
and I'm not sure where my stroke is here. So let me do a little search. There we go, under edit. Okay. There we go. But I can't fill it. So, because it's not online, I think I have to rasterize this first. And then just edit. That's kind of make up my selection here. Yeah, it's not going to work. All right, so let's do this. I have a social media dingbats. Dingbats are great because you can uh, really find some good signifiers in there too. Let's just go to the glyphs of this font here so we can see what type of arrows that they have. I actually kind of like this one. So we'll choose this one. We'll make it white. And we'll put this next to here so people know that they can actually click on that. Let's move this to the left a little bit. There we go. It's a little spaced out. Okay, at the bottom, same thing. Just uh, where's the original photo right there? I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to pull this down here. But instead of original photo, I'm going to have library photo video. Well, let's do filter. I think that probably makes more sense. Yeah, let's space this out. Evenly. And then we have to make sure people know which one they're on. So let's say we're on photo. We want this to be Same gold color. And then, you know, maybe a sliver of that is also gold. We might need to do like another layer for that. Foreground color. There we go. So we know that that one is selected. Let me pull this down just a little bit. There we go. So this would be kind of the screen. And let me put a little white background back here so you can kind of see. I guess we don't really need it, but. This is what you can use as your background for all of your other pieces. Now this is, so we're going to design the screen before this that shows just all of your apps with the Favicon. And once you click on that, you come to this, to this screen, which is the original logo. So I'm going to place the original logo in here that I just did my tutorial on because we want to show the before and after. So let's pull this up. Fit in there as good as I can. It's the original photo in there that we're going to be manipulating. So say that's the original photo. 
so this is a great example of the first screen after you see your favicon on the the very front uh, very first start of clicking on it okay the next one would be just um the let's see let me go to it here Um, I got lost the other one here. Nope, got it. So this would be the, oh, we have to have the branded frame on there too, and I didn't put that in there. So that this would be number two on your list uh, without the branded frame, and I'll put that in there. And then number three would be example photo and screen with filter options. Okay, so one thing I forgot is the logo, and I already downloaded the logo. So I'm gonna go file embedded, place embedded, sorry. Um, and then we'll place this probably somewhere in here where it's going to be visible, maybe on the lower right. There we go. Okay. So what's nice about setting this up is you can copy this and just change what you see inside here for the next screen. So this would be screen one. All right, so I am going to hide her and we're gonna say this is screen number three on the list. So example photo in screen with filter option, options. I'm almost wondering if number two should just show a screen that says, you know, we're ready to take a picture. You know, almost like, let me see if I can show you kind of an example here. Let me go in my Instagram app and see the look of this. If I wanna take a picture. Okay, yeah. See, so what we'll do is we'll make this one a little different here to kind of represent that you're going to take a picture. So, you know, maybe drawing the little button would be good for that. So maybe we'll make this like a yellow button with a stroke on it. So let's give it a, like a gray stroke so that people know that that's, you know, you're ready to take this picture. Let's put it up here. And then what we'll do, we'll do another layer and we're gonna put this layer, it's gonna be just kind of like the top half of the screen. Uh, what we can do is actually show this woman here in this screen. Let's duplicate her and we'll hide this one. But what we'll do is we'll do a clip path. So I just did a command, I'm sorry, option click where this gray part is. And then what I, what I think I'm gonna do is show her at a percentage, like almost like she's ready to, take, to get a picture taken. So I'm gonna put it like at a, a opacity of maybe 50%. You can even put like little lines in there to show, you know, grid structure. Um, and I also might make a new layer oops, where this becomes black or a different color here.
So this would be kind of like right before you take the picture. So this would be screen number two after you click on the actual favicon. And then hide everything. This would be screen three with uh, example photo with filter options. So we'll have to show the filter options below here. So maybe what I'll do for this one is just use the same lady and we'll just copy her, make her 100% and then the filter options will be down here. Now the filter options are going to be let's save this so we don't lose it. Remember the tutorial that I did uh, with the lady um, with the pop art. We're going to open that up. It's a separate document. These examples here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of Select all copy and we're going to paste this in, oops, sorry, to the other document that we saved in here. Oops, we have to uh, do it a little different. Let's link these. And we're just going to drag and drop. If I can find them. Let me get rid of this. Not for me to... Okay, then I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm going to go transform scale. Just scale that down. So we'll have three different options here. And I might just move the logo eventually here. Go back to the original one and then we'll hide that. We'll do an unlink. We'll link this one, this one, and this one. Drag it into this area here and again scale. You have to make sure if you're doing this, like how I'm doing it, you have to make sure it's the same size. It's a little tricky, but like I said, the logo, I think I'm going to play around with a different where it should go. And then the next one, and we'll probably have to make these a little smaller here. Be this and link. This one, this one, and this one to be linked. Oops, wrong box there. Sorry. Link layers. Drag and drop. Did I select the right one? No, I didn't. Ah. I need the pink one, right? Yeah, I need that one. Okay, so we have to unlink this one. We have to link this one, this one, and this one. Make them all the same size, and then what we can do is select all of these. 
and scale them together so that they fit right into our frames here. And then you can add this point. I'm going to release this. I'm going to release this here from there so that it kind of comes down to here. And then, of course, the original photo wording would change. So we're going to duplicate that, hide the original logo uh, wording, and we're going to, oh, not that. So it's all just about making layers and then we'll kind of hide them and save them out for their, for their particular um, options here. Options. Um, and then, you know, obviously This wording will duplicate, hide the original, go back to this one and make this the selected one. This one won't be white. And then duplicate that, hide that one, and then just move this one over. So it's on the filter. Now the logo, that's, that's the tricky part. We're gonna have to figure out a place for the logo. Um, sometimes the logos are featured up here, you know, like Instagram in the very first uh, area, but because this is the second screen, you probably could get away with not having that. Okay, so it's a little confusing when you get all your layers in here. So what you might want to do is once you insert all of these, you might want to flatten all these together. Or even just link them all together. So they're all, let's link them. We can all, oh, lock, not lock, link them. You can flatten them, but I'm just gonna link them just so if I need to go and change them, I can change them, be easier. So the favicon, the first number one screen, I'll show you on Friday how to create. Number two screen would be this example here. Just have to hide my stuff. And then we can change the logo placement here. Okay, so this will be screen number two. And the previous one that I just showed you with the filters would be screen number three. Um, and then screen number four would be photo example, pop art filter, and share options. So it would be basically whatever you decide to click on once you get to that filter it will show as the main image and then they'll be sharing options. So I'll go over that on Friday. I'll go over the first and fourth screen on Friday and then um, I will combine all those together, save them out so that you can see each one of those screens individually and then I will also show you how to place them onto your mock-up templates or a template and I will uh, also provide that template to you um, for placement if you would like to use that.
All right, I'm going to end it here because I went over a lot of stuff and I don't want to overwhelm you. So let me know if you have any questions, but just know in the meantime, you know, I will be going over the rest of how you'll place this into your mock-ups going forward. So if you're, you know, wanting to know that step-by-step -step instructions, definitely check that out uh, on Friday. I should have a recording done early on Friday so you can get a start on to that. I know it's due on Saturday, but um, like I said, it's going to be the, the next section of this. All right, let me know if you have any questions and I will be um, hopefully uh, wrapping this up on Friday uh, for you to go ahead and submit your work. All right, thanks.